Much is made over how governments make revenue and then spend it. BC has a reputation for balancing its books, but lately those historic black numbers have gone to red. In 2017, the province had a surplus of $151 million. The pandemic made for a big deficit plunge before some recovery. But now continued spending plus other factors BC can't control has the province looking at a $9 billion deficit this fiscal year. John Rustad and his BC Conservatives are using the numbers as leverage as they try to unseat the BC NDP from power. When you look across this province over the last seven years, can anybody say that there's anything that is better? And all of this spending, quite frankly, is just putting our, our kids and their future in jeopardy as well. Rusted plans to ramp up economic activity to boost revenues from BC's rich resources, such as minerals and trees. He also says balanced budgets are a priority. Our goal is over, over multiple terms, over two terms, uh, to get back to a balanced approach in British Columbia and bring common sense back. Meanwhile, David Eby, Premier for the last two budgets, says now is not the time to balance spreadsheets, but continued spending to help citizens facing unaffordability, wait times for health care, crowded transit and crowded classrooms. Now is the time that we need to be building, not cutting. We've got to build the schools and the hospitals and the roads and the transit systems and the infrastructure that makes it possible for our communities to be successful, to grow, to have that quality of life that every British Columbian deserves. So just how important are deficits and balanced budgets for BC? Economists on different sides of the political spectrum have some considerations. Fiscal discipline in the long run can make it easier to finance uh, the most important public services uh, that British Columbians value. Ben Eisen with the right-leaning think tank Fraser Institute is concerned. BC's debt as a percentage of its gross domestic product is steadily rising from historic numbers of around 15 percent up to 22 percent now with projections for it to go to 26 percent next year. Having to finance increased debt, he says, sucks taxpayer dollars away from other services. Most people would rather see it spent something other than more and more money going to debt service. But that's exactly what's going to happen if the province continues to routinely run a multi-billion dollar deficits. Meanwhile, Mark Lee with the left-leaning Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives says now is not the time to panic. In fact, BC could run, you know, large deficits for a few years before we got into anything that would be considered trouble. Lee says BC's debt as a percentage of its gross domestic product is still distant from more debt-ridden provinces, which in some places is double where BC is at. Spending with a slower return to balance over time, he argues, can help BC's economy. Generally, like it's a good thing for governments to uh, invest in their citizens. So if you're if you're you know running increasing your debt because you're uh, educating more people and you're building more homes and hospitals, a lot, some of that stuff is like actually good. It increases your capacity uh, as uh, an economy. Meanwhile, the BC Greens are proposing a third way to balance budgets and create more revenue through a more progressive tax system where those at the top pay more. We do have uh, tax measures that recognize that uh, people earning over $350,000 could pay a bit more of a marginal tax rate on that income above 350. The people that have enormous wealth in the form of assets, of, of housing assets, uh, should pay their fair share. Meanwhile, both the NDP and Conservatives are promising tax cuts, but they're complicated in how they could add to the deficit and when they would actually fully benefit citizens. Economists do agree voters should pay attention to what politicians are promising when it comes to finances to see how it all adds up. Chad Pawson, CBC News, Vancouver.